Hello and welcome to the Sherlock's Show. I'm Georgie Courage Cole and joining me on the sofa today are Laura Black, Tor Cardona and Harriet Russell. Welcome ladies. We have a jam-packed show for you today with everything from a debrief on Victoria Beckham's latest collection to a really delicious and easy recipe later in the show. Laura and I will also be showing you our favourite buys from Zara Home and we'll be joined by the founder of Studio 10 Beauty, Grace Fodor, who will be sharing her four-step beauty routine to combat the signs of ageing. But first, we could not talk about Caroline Flack and what a shame that it's taken her suicide for us to realise that the status quo in this country when it comes to how we treat those in the public eye is really not acceptable. Now, Laura, you feel like we shouldn't really be talking about Caroline Flack. Mm, I Why do. It's really, really got me, this one. You know, sometimes you hear of people dying in the press, but this one, I, it just came out of nowhere for me. I guess, in hindsight, it's obviously quite, off, quite obvious that she's been hounded, but I now think for people to come out and still be talking about it and being so much in the press is exactly what drove her mm. to take her own life, and mm. I... I kind of think everybody should be mm. agreed. quite quiet about it. And, and actually, we were on the podcast tour, and Harriet and I, um, yesterday, and we talked about it. The point I thought afterwards we hadn't made was that the press, who were so foul to her, are now the ones writing how sad this was. It's so hypocritical, mm. isn't it? Mm. That, you know, they were the so cause true. of it. And it's now, so true. And now they're all writing these tributes to her and what an amazing career she had. Exactly, and all her family have asked is just, please... Leave us alone, leave her alone. Mm. And they're sort of taking pictures outside her house and reprinting pictures of it. I just think yeah, enough, that, just yes. enough is enough. It's true. It's a bit I can't stop thinking about it. Neither can I. I literally I. can't mm. stop thinking about it's it. It's like it's not real. I know. Mm. Um, yeah, is anyway. it because she's female? I don't know why. I don't, I don't know why. Or I did just, she yeah. just always look so happy mm. that it's such a shock that she mm. felt so sad inside? Mm. Mm. Well, Let's hope that we all learn something from her death. And Have you all signed the petition? Yes. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I felt a bit, not half-hearted, but I was like, what, you know, it's a crappy token, a gesture, but mm. if, it's, but if, if you it can do, do anything, something. Exactly. exactly. But it's um, already had hundreds yeah. of thousands yeah, of signatures. Yeah, I think it was at half a million. Yeah, it's reached, it's, reached, it's reached the level where it will be debated in Parliament, right. I think. So. Harriet, you wrote a great piece that went live on Sherlock's yesterday about about Caroline, about the CPS, which we won't go into now. Um, we did it on the podcast, but also about what a reminder it is to be more kind. I feel like literally in the 48 hours, it's been 72 hours since she died. I feel like I keep sort of going, no, 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 be more kind. I sort of mm. sat down with my children actually on Sunday and they were asking my husband and I what we were talking about. And I said, what we're talking And I thought, well, do I tell them, do I not? And, and I did tell them. And they said, we really need to remember this. And you need to remember that mm. social media does this. Mm. And you need to try and remember not to write bad things about, I was trying to, you know, and it's sort of children's, mm. trying to teach them a bit of a message about kindness. Harriet, mm. has it impacted you in that way? Yeah, massively. I think it's, yesterday happened to be National Random Acts of Kindness Day, which is somewhat ironic given the mm. circumstances, but it was something we led with the intro to the piece because it really is a reminder that, your words and not just on social media comments you leave on videos or <laughs> on newspaper articles or whatever um, all have an effect and I can speak from personal experience you know when I was a broadsheet journalist the abuse that I got was unbelievable really um, and really intense and it was really only thankfully my editors and my bosses at the time who constantly told me to ignore it or moderated the really unreasonable stuff yeah. for it not impacting and, my And I have health. to just interrupt there and say, we do now moderate, and we were criticised once for removing comments on our YouTube. I also said this on the podcast, but I'm going to repeat myself, <laughs> that, that you know my team now know if there are any negative comments towards my staff that they have my backing to remove them straight away. It is not okay for people who are doing their job. It's one thing people who are out there seeking fame. Caroline Flat was doing her job. Mm -hmm. you know, it, she was just a normal person. Like we're yeah. all just normal people, and I just you're not you're not taught to grow that thick skin. Exactly. You have to. You know. It's one thing if you seek it and you go into a reality show, mm. and you know that's a that's a whole nother yeah. conversation, isn't it? Mm. Um, anyway, be more kind. 
definitely be more kind. Yeah, be kinder than you think you even need to be. Yeah, and I mm. think the, the random acts of kindness is a great thing, and it's actually gaining more and more me momentum yeah. every year, isn't it? So I think we're But just all... do it. I think don't think about it too much. Just go and do that kind thing that yes. might have crossed mm. your mind. Mm. I said to my children on Sunday, I want all of you to tell me something you're grateful for. Mm. So the first answer was an iPad. I was like, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I'm going for. Anyway, you know, got to start these things, start small. Um, okay, we're going to change the subject entirely and talk about London Fashion Week, which is in full swing. Well, quite a lot of it's happened, actually. We were in the office talking about it yesterday, and I think Lou said she's like, I was quite disappointed by quite a lot of the shows, other than Victoria Beckham, uh, who I think, Gave us a great spectacle, as always. I love, I always love seeing her show and who's in the front row. Laura, did you watch? Yeah, I did. A bit different for her. Less of that mid-length. It's all come up a little bit, hasn't it? Um, yeah, I, I loved it. And and the knee-high boot, the over the love it thigh-high boot is back. It's great. Isn't yeah, it? I wasn't sure about the heel. I think that was that was purely for the runway. Maybe. Yeah. They look like they're going to fall over some of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I loved those boots. In fact, there was loads I loved. Tor, Harriet, I know you've both seen it. Yeah, for me it was very different to what she's aesthetically what she's done before. And for the first time for me it was something a little bit more relatable perhaps. Yeah. And yeah, big fan. Harriet? Yeah, I loved it. There was a sort of polka dot dress in there <gasps> with sort of big blouse mm. on Loved. the Loved. Hopefully shoulder, there's an asset, yes. It's a very sort of rotate-esque sort of riff, cool. which seems to be permeating through so many people's collections. Yeah. So yeah, I it's really cool. love that one. She has some amazing dresses. The black, the black sort of billowy dresses she did. Uh, the earrings she did, did yeah. you see mm. those? Uh, Isabel Moran kind of inspired earrings that were incredible mm. and her collars and yeah. I thought it was great. I think she said, I read something and she was saying, now I can't remember who she, she referenced, but it was that they wore the same thing from day to night, they just changed, they changed, changed their, their makeup. makeup. I read that too. Yeah, and mm. I kind of love Clever when you've just launched a beauty line. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of more how I roll. Yeah, and I love seeing, seeing them all in the front row as well. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. I, and I, it doesn't sound very kind, I'm really sorry, but I, I wasn't loving what they were wearing in the front row. Love seeing the Beckham family out in force. I'm a big Beckham fan, yeah. but I mean... I think whatever, they, whatever they'd worn, you probably would have criticised. Well, not you, one would have criticised. Yeah, oh, but maybe know. Harper needs her own seat now. Yeah. <laughs> she's <laughs> she's <laughs> sitting on big. their lap. She's quite also, she's what are David up. and Anna Winter <laughs> chatting about? I'm always like, what are they chatting about? They're always sort of yeah. so engrossing conversation. Um, I also wasn't a fan of his white socks, I had to say. No. David's. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't mind that. A bit so Michael Jackson there. Yeah, I wasn't, no. Really? Yeah. It's not your thing. Tell me off he a can't bit. put a foot wrong in my eyes. <laughs> uh, we were also going to talk about Burberry. And, you know, if you did think that London was looking a bit disappointing, then go and check out the Burberry show. And even if you're not a massive follower of Fashion Weeks around the world, it was, to me, just one of the best we've seen so far this year. It's incredible. Yes, agreed. Yes, yes, totally agreed. 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 It really was. Wasn't and it? I felt like the check was slightly back. Yeah. You know, it's gone from being that kind of mm, well, that's that what you were saying. Awful yeah, association yeah. that it used to have. Yes. A little less sporty, mm. and now it's kind of grown up. And, and very chic. Yeah. I mean, Tori Beckham had some amazing plays as well on the runway. Yeah. yeah. Um, I loved. I, I hopefully an asset has come up um, with a few of our favourite looks. The cream. Like silky trend. Top to mm. Oh, I mean, I've not seen the trench done like that. Yeah, stunning, wasn't it? Exactly, so good. Um, and then the uh, incredible caramel with the grey, which is just so chic. Yeah. Uh, and I loved with the vel the leopard collar with the black. With the black. Mm. Yeah, so good. I loved it. Anyway, amazing. Very chic. Amazing show. Anyway, lots more to come. Lots more fashion chat to come. Um, but those were our favourites. Anyway, thank you, ladies. Uh, coming up after the break, from glassware to side tables, we have picked our favourite home accessories on the high street. Plus, Grace Fodor will be teaching us the secret to perfect makeup. Don't go away. Andrea. Hello, I'm Sophie Conran. Welcome to my flat in London. <laughs>
whether you want to completely redecorate your living space or you're just in the market for a few new accessories, there is no question that the high street is full of stylish, well-priced homeware. And Laura and I have picked out our favourite pieces from none other than Zara Home. And it's a great edit. I'm obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really great edit. Uh, you did all the hard work, Laura, and you've absolutely nailed it. We're going to start off talking about this chair. I'm going to let you talk about this chair. I know this is a real favourite. I've got quite a lot to say about this chair. <laughs> I just, a shielding chair for me is just, it's been on my wish list for a while. I think this is, it's £230 or something, I think, it around. It is, it is. Um, it's just so cool. The legs, I think, look really expensive with the roundness at the bottom. I think as a pair, it would look oh, yeah. just amazing with other kind of natural fibres. I, yeah. Love it. She likes it. I she quite, likes I it. I quite like it. Okay. Um, well, this I think I like more than that chair. This is, it's called the Long Bench. It's rattan. Rattan is going nowhere, is it? Yeah, I'd say it's a bit more cane, which cane. I feel like, okay, yeah, cane, cane. a little, it's just, a, I mean, yes. I, the difference, I don't know, but it's just, it feels, I think this feels quite grown up. I think it looks like expensive so expensive yeah. i mean if i saw that in a really really smart shop i yeah. would that's 300 pounds and i mean at the end of a bed at the end of a bed or in a bathroom i in think would be bathroom. so good it's absolutely yeah. lovely lovely one of the nicest things i've seen to come and out. also Sorry. it's actually a little it looks a little bigger it's a little bigger in reality than I thought it looked online. Oh, it's, a, it's a proper piece of furniture. Yeah, it's a bit of proper bit of piece furniture. of furniture. Um, okay, next, another beauty, absolute beauty, is this floral quilt. This is £200. This, this is just a stunner. Isn't it? Yeah. It's like, it's double-sided. It's got the frill. It's very preen, isn't it? It's, yeah. But it is just, I, I think that's a lot for your money. I feel like I sort of can't show it off enough but it's I massive think it's huge yeah and that on the end of a bed oh it's Gorgeous. just complete heaven going Gorgeous. into spring with like the windows open getting snug i, think I know i think whether that's like master bedroom your bedroom your child's yeah, bedroom. Yeah, it could be a children's bedroom. Gorgeous. It's part of a range, isn't it? It's really, really lovely. Yeah, they have a cushion, matching cushion, which was only about £30 if you want something a bit cheaper. Okay, right. We're going to do a bit of moving furniture. I'm mm -hmm. going to give you that so we don't have a breakage. And then I, oh my Lord. Here we go. Here we go. So, first of all, I mean, can we just say their furniture is so good? It's not so just accessories. Good. And actually narrowing it down, I found quite difficult. I was trying to to give a bit of cover for each style. So I think if you want it, if you've got a slightly more modern house, then, I mean, this is what, 120? 160 quid. 160 quid. So like a, I don't yeah. know, I expect it to, here, but it's a proper table. It's really nice. It's really nice, isn't it? Love that. Uh, okay, so that's the table. And then on the table, we've got mm. some goodies. Um, we're not, I, I'm going to get in trouble if we skip the order. Okay. So I'm going to take that off you. We're going to talk about the glasses. <laughs> okay. Um, which are lovely, aren't they? So you don't have to buy a whole piece of furniture. They've you got... don't. And Zara, I think, does glasses so well. Mm. I'm quite particular about glass. I like it to be quite fine. And I think they do these really well. Love that they're doing all the colours. So they're, you know, everybody's talking about. And tablescaping is just huge. Mm. And I think going into spring and summer, it's only going to get bigger. Yeah. So put those on your... Candlestick. On your table. Love him. How nice is that? Yeah, so lovely. I think that comes in blue as well. And that is just, oh, so good, isn't it? And that's pretty in a bathroom. Lovely. And then we've also got, what have we got here? Plastic salad bowl. Yeah, it's like an acrylic salad bowl. It comes with some servers. Again, just... Really nice. Know, maybe I'm getting a bit excited for, yeah. for slightly warmer. It's freezing outside. <laughs> uh, anyway, that is really nice. I think that's a really nice gift for, a present, for your host or something. Exactly. And I well. think kind of to finish off the whole tablescape, this tablecloth. It's just, I mean, the colours kind of, I feel mm. like we've got a bit of a theme here. But it's just so pretty. It's like really delicate little roses. Lovely. Kind of. Let me see that. You could find that in Cutterbrook and wouldn't, you could. You wouldn't question it, would you? Cutterbrook is the most dreamy shop in the Cotswolds for anyone wondering. Anyway, that is really nice. How much is that one? 20 quid for that tablecloth. God, so nice. It's so easy to update your home now, isn't Exactly. It? Uh, and finally, actually not finally, the penultimate is this vase. I 
love the spas. I think that's such a lot of bars for the money. And I love you were questioning the kind of texture of it. But I, I sort of love... felt it should be in a pottery cafe and my children should be about to make a complete mess of it. Yeah, but... See, I love that. I feel like it feels so kind of natural and clean. Yeah. Put in some eucalyptus. I think that would just be yeah. such a big centerpiece. It's gorgeous. Centerpiece, gorgeous, 50 quid. And actually, the, the final piece is a tray, which is just behind you, Laura. Yeah, so this is just, if I guess if you have slightly more modern style, somebody, an interior designer once said to me to add a bit of black into every can scheme. I just can I say Laura told me this last week and I was like oh my god that is just such a good tip yeah because it just I guess it adds a little bit of contrast to whatever you're yeah. working with um it stops anything looking too twee too twee exactly yeah, so tip. I thought if you've got that you could just you know put whatever it might be on it but it could go in a bathroom um I thought even like on a simple um, chest with sort of black and white frames above it if your house is a bit more modern. I just love that and I love the contrast of the handles. I thought a bit of sushi would be nice. Oh, that would be nice too. Anyway, amazing. What a lineup. Love it all. Love it all. Thank you, Laura. Uh, as everything, as usual, everything will be linked in the show notes below. Now, next, in the first of our Easy Meals series, we're handing over to the conscientious cook, Nikki, who's showing us how to make the perfect veggie tray bake. After that, I'll be joined by the founder of Studio 10 Beauty, Grace Fodor, who will be sharing her anti-aging secrets, including how to achieve a flawless complexion at home, no matter your age. Don't miss it. I'm going to make a vegetarian tray bake with butter beans. First of all, you want to uh, slice the fennel. Uh, and then put the slices into a bowl. Add some olive oil, a good pinch of sea salt, some black pepper, and then your oregano. And then give it a really good stir. Then you layer it into your lined baking sheet. Lovely olive oil in there too. Then you put that into a 180 oven for um, about 10 minutes. You just want to halve the tomatoes. Then take your garlic and then you just smash them. Use the heel of your hand and the knife and squish them. And now add the garlic. Pop that back in the oven. And then with the bowl of tomatoes, add another splash of olive oil, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar, two tablespoons, which is half a squeezed lemon, the capers, lemon salt, and then again, use your hands to mix it all in. And then you're gonna add the tomato and caper mixture. Now that the tomato and cake is in, you pour in 100 mils of stock and pop that back in the oven. So when you're ready to serve, five minutes before, take out the fennel and the tomatoes and add the butter beans. And then pop that back in the oven for another five minutes. Take it out of the oven and sprinkle with some fresh oregano. And this is my vegan butter bean tray bake. In 2016, Grace Fodal started Studio 10 Beauty with the goal of creating a high-performing capsule collection of pro-age quick fixes formulated for maturing and mature skins because our skin begins to age from the mid-30s and beyond. She's here today to share her four tips on shortcutting your way to flawless, radiant skin. Welcome, Grace. Great to be here. Lovely to have you. Welcome, Miranda, Thank your you. very, very kind model. Um, and friend. And friend. She's got to be a friend who's going to do this kind of thing, hasn't it? Um, uh, so there, there are four, four steps, you say, to... Make up. Know, Making your well, makeup I, I, look good as you age and tackling Well, the signs of aging and just to put your best face forward because I've had so many women say, I don't understand makeup, it's complicated, there's too much. Where do I start? Where do I finish? Mm. And I thought, I've got to make it simple. 
yeah. for myself. I'm not a makeup artist, and yeah. we're busy rushing around. We yeah. don't really have time to do our makeup. So I thought I'm going to do it in four simple steps. Okay. So those four steps are prime, perfect, shape, and shade. And Miranda has half a face <laughs> ready to go. And as you talk to us today, she's going to do the other half. Yeah. And Show us how easy it is to do it at home because it's one thing having makeup artists do your absolutely makeup and for being you able to in do a store, it but, yeah. and also to fit it into your morning routine. Mm. I mean, mm. how many of us are doing fifty things mm. before we leave the house? Mm. Absolutely. So, prime, perfect shape and shade. Prime. Okay, so let's let's start. Yeah, I'll start with prime. Um, so prime is the way to describe prime is imagine painting a wall and not filling in the cracks. Okay. So it's very much about evening the texture of the skin because as you age, you get fine lines, wrinkles, pores enlarge, and the wrong makeup actually can accentuate those. So we need to use a primer. Plus, it means your skin's much drier as you go during the course of the day. Your makeup doesn't fall off. Okay. So now, can I just say I know that you don't want to push <laughs> how brilliant your products are, but this is this is amazing, this, isn't it? Yeah. This is your Youth Lift Glow Plexion. Anyway. And it is an amazing product because it is a primer, but it creates that lip from within radiance and it's a highlighter. Okay. And the most important thing about this, if you're using primers that have radiance in them, go for a warm gold undertone because a lot of highlighters have silver in them. So they're okay. quite strobey and you don't want okay. to look like a glitter ball. It's we lovely. want to look it's, radiant. It's very subtle. I love it. It's a great product. Okay. And you can mix it with body lotion all over your body when you're on holiday. Nice. On the collarbones. Lovely. Okay, so we've primed. Um, next, we are perfecting. I'm going to take that brush off you. You don't need the brush, do you? Um, so we're perfecting. So, so this is the cover-up job. Yeah, literally okay. a cover-up job. So the main areas, and actually not just ageless beauty, all women, even you know from teenagers, first big area problem, under eyes. Okay, circles. so can you, can you show us, so Miranda has got here your palette, which has got a load of different colours, peach, green. It's a bit scary. Yellow I'll go me. through them quickly. So as, yeah. So peach is really important for dark circles because uh, dark circles are blue or purple. So peach has an orange undertone that takes out blue and purple. Green is for any redness. Okay. Whether it's hormonal flushing, redness around the nose, you've got a cold, you're tired. And yellow is a brilliant concealer colour because it brightens. So lots of little tips on how to wide awake eyes. You can put yellow on the eyelids, just takes out any discoloration okay. and looks like so you've those, had eight hours sleep. Those are the, the main colours. So we want green, peach... Yellow. And yellow. Okay. So under eye, tick about the under eye area. Most women cover here, but okay. actually you want to go into the inner Can corner. Can you show us around? So most women in, cover. Like all into this inner corner of the eye because there's a lot of darkness. Okay. And you want to brighten. You want wide awake eyes. Okay. And then redness tends to be more around the nose area, onto the cheek area, a little okay. bit on the okay. chin. I need to just turn you a little bit around so everyone can see. Okay. Here's one we made earlier. Okay. Um, right, well, we'll let, you, we'll let you keep putting that on. And then a really good trick for wide awake eyes, because I have so many women just say, I wake up tired and I look tired. Yeah. A little bit of um, yellow base concealer, because yellow brightens and neutralizes on the eyelid will just really brighten the eye okay. area. And, and it's that easy, and you actually don't need foundation. If you do, I always say, if you don't need foundation, don't wear it. But so many of us feel... Interesting. So you're going for the primer, you're going for the cover-up. But you're not necessarily piling on a foundation. No. If you need foundation, then use a foundation. Tend to use um, more of a dewy, because you okay. want the skin to look dewy. You don't want it to look too drying. And okay. a liquid or a tinted moisturiser. Tend to avoid the powder-based foundations. Anything too heavy. All right. Uh, so, step three. We've primed. We've perfected. You're now going to shape. This is about definition. This is about shape. I describe it as sort of spanks for the face because as we age, we lose collagen elasticity and things tend to go south. So we need to add in the shape. All the glamour. The it's all, all the glamour. glamour. Shape definition. So the two main areas, brows and lips. Okay. You've got amazing brows, Miranda, I have to say. <laughs> amazing brows. So some tips on, can Miranda be doing her brows while we like chat? That. Um, what are you looking for in a brow pencil? Well, the main thing, most brow products are actually too warm. They've got too much orange in them, and it looks like you've painted your brows on. So if you want a natural brow um, that mimics the colour of hair, you actually go for something quite grey and quite ashy. Okay. 
Okay. Um, and you use that to sculpt. And the key thing about brows is always bring it round, if you can see on Miranda, just bring it round to here so you, you create a tail, so it creates a really nice... Lisa yeah. always says you want the end of your... Corner of your eye and your nose. Absolutely, because it creates the shape. And yes. so many women do the, the, you know, this end and they don't curl it all the way around to create okay. that lo lovely curve. Um, let's talk about lips, because, you know, so lip liner is something that a lot of people would run a mile from, you know, rather than use a lip liner. I have to say, and again, you're going to be too professional, but I know that your lip liner has become a real cult that product has. and that people swear by it. Um, I, I, I think someone once said to me she, it was life changing. Studio Jen's lip liner was life changing. So there's a statement for you. Do you um, know, I spent so. This is the one product that actually has my name on it because my lips are thin. I've actually got age spots. I've got I mean, fine lines. Because you got I this? use this. Perfect. And okay. your lips thin out. And everybody wants plump, fuller lips. And for those of us who don't have them, you can fake it. The key okay. thing about a lip pencil is the colour, because I'll most people like to use a nude um, lip pencil. They tend to be quite peachy. Okay. But actually, if you use a peach coloured lip liner, it looks like you're wearing a peach lip liner. Yeah. So this one, um, I analysed lips, and I tested it on men. And actually, it's in the colour, so it's okay. got a blue undertone. So right. it's a pinky tone with a blue undertone to look like blood. So you can draw in a lip shape and you cannot tell you're wearing lip liner. Looks fab, I have to say, you nailed that one. Okay. And then this is the biggest trick of okay. the century. Um, makeup artists always put a little bit of highlighter here to right. reflect light, to create a plump. And if you look at anybody, Angelina Jolie, who's naturally got a plumped lip, or maybe she hasn't, not sure, but they've got a halo, it's called a milk line. Okay. So those of us who don't have it, we can fake it with this on the other end of the pencil. Which is why Let's this hope is for us all <laughs> looking like Angelina Jolie. Well, that's a relief. Okay. So brows, lips, frame the top of the face, okay. the bottom of the face. And then if you want a little bit more definition to create natural contours, you're worried about wanting more definition, then you can do some light, use a, a matte bronzer, a little bit of contouring. But I think the most important thing for me is definition around the brows, the lips. And brows and lips as you age. Okay, so that's step three. Uh, step four is shade. shade so what are you using and why so shade if you imagine you've got this beautiful flawless radiant skin but you've got no color look a bit pasty we don't want to look pasty so we need to add pigment that we lose as we age um, in the summer it's great to tan up but all year round i absolutely love this color and it's peach and peach is a girl's best friend because it's the quickest way and the easiest way to pick up the complexion. Okay. And that's because peach has orange, which is warm, gives uh -huh. it warmth. Uh -huh. And it's also got pink and pink brightens. Okay. So a little bit on the apple, the cheeks, blend out as you would blusher. But the real trick, a little bit on the forehead, down nice. the nose, on the chin. Down the nose. Down the nose. Okay. As you would bronzer, sweep it through the eyelids and it transforms the complexion. Okay. And a tip with blusher, move away from powders because okay. powder tends to sit on top of the skin and it almost sticks to the emulsion or the foundation or tinted moisturiser and it, it looks like you're wearing makeup. So if you've got a creme, you can blend, you can buff it into the skin. It just looks like you've got a glorious peachy skin. Amazing. Your skin looks fantastic, I have to say. Uh, Grace, before we finish, I have to say, this is not this part of the four <laughs> step, but I have to just give a shout out to your amazing six in one. You love Perfect this lash. mascara. I love this mascara. Can I just show For everybody? As long as I've known you, you I know, love this I know. mascara. Can I just show everybody looking? Uh, can I just show everybody at home? So it's got two ends. It's got a, a fine one for the bottom lashes and then a thick one, but it's clever because it's not fully round. It's not fully round. We've literally cut the edges so you can go right down to the lash yeah. root and as you pull it up, you get this amazing full slash effect. Well, but I have tried you. a lot of mascaras. <laughs> this is in my top three. I'm never without this. I used it this morning. Uh, this is not an ad. Uh, I genuinely love <laughs> I it. Don't really anyway, love it. Uh, Grace, thank, thank you so you. much. Miranda, thank you so much. <laughs> so that's all we've got to remember. Prime, perfect, shape, shade. shade. That's it. Full Simple steps. Step.
Thank, Thank you so you. much. Uh, we will definitely be trying those tips at home. Now, on Thursday's show, Anna Leon will be joining Charlotte for a fashion haul. Plus, the team are going head to head in a live food maths <laughs> challenge. Tune in to see Heather Harriet and Charlotte try to come up with the most out of the box recipe with just £10 to spend. Until then, don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, comment something nice and kind, and tell your friends. Bye-bye.